This video is about making a belt grinder from scratch, it's detailed, so make sure you see all the steps. I tried to use only simple material that I found at home in my workshop and some scrap. At the end of the video, the professional belt grinder is finished and ready for hard work. For me, it is mainly for making knives and swords. I will try to describe all the necessary details and work procedures that will make your work easier. I recommend creating at least a simple sketch before work, it will help you not to forget important steps. The human brain is good for coming up with ideas, not so much for storing them. If you are not sure, measure the length several times before cutting, because once you cut it, you can't put it back. I always use a center punch, so that the drill always makes a hole in the place where it should be. If you don't do it, and you think you're going to save time, you're only going to cause yourself problems. You risk that the drill will slip to another place. Good preparation is important. You know, slow is accurate, and accurate is fast. As I said before, if you use a center punch, the drill will find the right place. If you need to drill different holes, always start drilling with a thinner drill bit. Drill all the holes with it, this way you will prepare the way for a thicker drill with the final thickness. It has two significant advantages, the first is accuracy, a thicker drill bit will find the right place more easily when following a thinner hole, and the second is the fact that the tip of thicker drill bits is usually not intended for piercing the material. After drilling, when all the holes have the correct size, you need to use the tool that removes the sharp edges. Again, it has at least two advantages, the first is safety. You know, sharp edges can injure you. The second advantage is the simple assembly of the elements, the sharp edges are not above the surface of the material and therefore do not interfere. I cut the thread into the metal by hand, not with a machine. In order for the hand tap to work well, you need to drill a hole of the correct size. Not too small, because it will get stuck and break, but not too big, because the thread will not be strong enough. It is possible to buy a set in which there are hand taps and drills with exact dimensions. I recommend using oil during the process, this way the process will run smoothly and there is much less risk of breaking the hand tap. Oh, really great, you liked my video. That will help a lot. Thank you very much, and be sure to comment on what you like and what else you would like to see. 
It will help me a lot to get this video to as many people as possible. And one more thing, you know what will help me even more? If you really want to help me even more, then become a member of my channel. You will directly support my work, the preservation of crafts and traditions, and it will also help me to buy accessories for making videos in better quality than for example a new camera. So, all the pieces are cut, drilled, and sanded. It's time to weld them together according to the drawing. Here again, you have to be careful what you weld to wear. If it's not in the right place, either destroy those parts, or waste a lot of time cutting, and welding it to the right place. So you have to measure it often, and check if everything is as it should be. After each major weld, the weld must be cleaned, and sanded. At least you won't have to do it in the end. In order to prevent the machine from rusting, the surface must be painted. I always use only the basic color, black or white. I found out from experience, that this is pretty good protection. After all, it doesn't rain on the machine, so it doesn't need extra protection. For me my machines are also beautiful like this. You know how they say the plan works until the first fight? That's how it always is, even now. The sketch of the machine is good so that you don't forget the most important parts, but small details always change during production. I forgot to weld the switch holder, so sand the surface, weld and paint again. A little test never hurts, yes, it's pretty solid. I found an old steel axle of similar dimensions, so just gently turn and mill, and the axle for the gridner is ready. We will now assemble all these parts in the correct order and make sure that everything has the correct dimensions. I bought the aluminum wheel from China, it has sufficient quality and a good price. I bought the rest of these parts that I can't make at a local store. My electric motor is 3 phase and spins 1400 spins per minute. That's why I need the steel axis to change the ratio and increase the spins per minute, and thus the speed of the aluminum wheel, and also the speed of the sanding belt.
A few small parts for the front part of the grinder were laser cut by a local company. It's only a few pieces, so it wasn't expensive. But these parts have a shape that would be difficult to produce, but it was easier this way. All you have to do is weld them together and spray them with paint. and it's time to start assembling the machine. The lower part was originally from some old machine. I don't know what kind of machine it was and what it was used for, but it is heavy, stable, so I will use it as a solid stand. I like using parts of old machines because they were made properly. This aluminum wheel, is supposed to keep the sanding belt in the correct path, so that it is not too much to the left or right during sanding. It is possible to adjust the angle of this wheel. This spring will keep the sanding belt under tension. Therefore, the sanding belt will hold properly on all wheels, will not slip, and will sand well. The wheels I used here are originally intended for a hand pallet truck. I have good experience with it on my other grinders that I use, they last well for several years and are not unnecessarily expensive. I often buy things that were originally intended for something else, but they do another job well, sometimes even better than the part that was originally intended for that. This also saves money.
Once again, thank you very much for watching the whole video. Let me know in the comments if it helped you or if you learned something. It's great that you share it on social networks. Thank you for the like and thank you very much to everyone who decided to become a member of my channel, because even if it costs you almost nothing, it will help me a lot. Enough showing off for this white lady, it's time for some hard work. <laughs>